first of all, what are the types of platelet products which are available? Broadly speaking, there are two types of platelet products that you need to know. Uh, all of you are residents, so you must have uh, given requisition for platelet products. So broadly speaking, there are two types of platelet products. The first one, the common one, are the platelet concentrates. In short, when you fill the form, you write it as uh, itna unit of PC is required. When you, when you say PC, we are talking about platelet concentrates. They are derived from whole blood by centrifugation and platelet concentrates are the most commonly used product used for platelet transfusion. When you go to a blood uh, bank and you uh, get those uh, platelet products, they are mostly of the this variety. So they are also called as RDP that is random donor platelet. So you are not specifying that this particular donor should be giving the platelet. So it is a, a pooled blood from where centrifugation ke baad you are taking out platelet concentrate. So RDP and platelet concentrate is the same thing. Please do not get confused in exam. So one unit of platelet concentrate is about 50 ml and it contains between 5.5 to 10 into 10 raised to the power 10 platelets. Approximately, usually uh, also Nelson gives a range of 5.5 to 10. If you look at Indian textbooks and most of the other hematology textbooks, they give a range between 5 to 6.5 into 10 raised to the power 10 platelets, right? And it is easier to use in infants and small children and it is cheaper and easily available. The second one is the aphoresis platelets, also called as uh, single donor platelet. They are the ones which are derived by aphoresis. You cannot simply walk into a blood bank and expect to find a aphoresis platelet product. You have to actually plan it, give it, find a donor and then get the uh, required product delivered to you. It is a costly product. It is often synonymously used with SDP that is single donor platelet. One unit of aphoresis platelet is about 300 to 600 ml. Usually a single value of 500 ml is sometimes taken and it contains 3 into 10 raised to power 11 platelets. So the overall platelet amount is more in aphoresis product. The amount is not only more but it is costly but it has reduced chances of allosensitization. So in case uh, you want to give repeated platelet transfusion, Aphoresis platelet will be better compared to platelet concentrate because end of the day see platelet when you are giving uh, all these platelet products they will still have some remnants some antigens derived from RBCs and some degree of allosensitization can develop. When you use aphoresis platelet the chances of allosensitization are reduced and so this is a safer product although it is more costly and in general more commonly used is the platelet concentrate product. So platelet concentrate RDP commonly used. FRSS PLT more concentrated, you more costly and indicated where repeated transfusions need to be given also called as single donor platelet product. So these are the two different products that you need to remember. Now what is the storage time and transfusion time? The storage time is usually 5 days. When you store it, you don't store it in a refrigerator, you always store it at room temperature at somewhere around 22 degrees Celsius. So slightly colder but uh, certainly not in a fridge. And uh, in case of FRSS products, pro provided strict uh, asepsis is maintained and uh, a temperature agitator is available, you can store up to 7 days, up to 7 days. But usually if you are asked a single value, the storage time for plated product is, it has to be used within 5 days. The transfusion time, it should be given relatively rapidly. It should be transfused within 2 hours but not longer than 4 hours. So a prolonged platelet transfusion, a common mistake first year residents in pediatrics often make is uh, their seniors have taught them that, that all the blood products should be given slowly. So what they will do is IV IG ka transfusion diya pichle din, it was given over 12 hours. So what they will do is they will start platelet transfusion and keep the rate give over 12 hours. Absolutely wrong. It is to be given within 2 hours as a transfusion. And uh, what are the points regarding platelet transfusion which are relevant, which are important, can be asked to you in your various interviews in super special INISS and they can be asked in your NEAT SS as well. I have collected from various hematology textbooks. So whenever possible, you should be using a ABO or RH identical platelet. If that is not available, ABO or RH compatible donor platelets can be used. If there is an emergency, you need to give platelet transfusion, but uh, it is a RH negative patient, but RH negative product is not available. And you need to give RH positive platelets. In such patients, you need to also give 250 microgram injection of NTD globulin to prevent RH sensitization. It is mandatory, especially if it is a female patient. You know the risk of RH incompatibility later on in life. 
Platelets are thermosensitive. Do not store them in a fridge. If the examiner asks you or if the question asks you, platelets were stored in a fridge for 20 minutes. You suddenly come to know and find that they are stored for the last 20-25 minutes in a fridge. What is to be done? Unfortunately, discard them. Platelets when stored in, uh, in a fridge at say about 4, 5, 6 or 7 degrees Celsius or below that, you find that within 5 to 10 minutes, although the range is variable, it is not standardized, but within uh, 5 to 10 minutes, most of the platelets, they lose their potency. They are no longer effective. So they have to be stored at a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. And because the platelets have a tendency to aggregate, so you should use a constant agitator. In fact, uh, once the platelet transfusion is going to be started and if the platelet concentrate has been lying for, you know, half an hour or so, we always take the product, shake it a bit, do, do not shake it like you are making a milkshake, but shake it a bit and then start with the transfusion. And you should never use a glassware when you are using a platelet product. It should always be a sterile plastic uh, based products, plastic uh, syringes, plastic, you know, uh, glass product, maybe it is less commonly used, but ideally you should not be using any glass product it should be coming in contact with the platelet product because platelets have a tendency to adhere to aggregate in response to the glass surface. Now, regarding neonatal platelet transfusion, when I say neonate, I am talking about neonates also, but the same will be applicable for children up to two to three months also in terms of transfusion. So, those neonates who require repeated platelet transfusion, additionally, they should receive leukocyte reduced blood products to uh, decrease the chances of HLA immunization, platelet refractiveness chances should be reduced and to also reduce the risk of TTCMV, cytomegalovirus infusion, if it is uh, infection, if it is transmitted through transfusion or transmission, we call it as TTCMV. So, uh, neonates who require repeated transfusion, so you can give, but otherwise you should use leukocyte reduced blood products. For those infants who are uh, less than 1500 grams birth weight, irradiation should also be recommended to prevent transfusion associated graft versus host disease potential MCQ point, very, very important point. It can be converted retrospectively into a uh, MCQ as well. Then platelet transfusion should not be delayed if CMV negative units are unavailable. In certain centers, uh, Nelson also talks about it, ki, uh, certain centers undue emphasis is given. We are not talking about in an Indian setting, but we are talking about tertiary care centers where uh, you know, all the facilities and testing and everything is available. Undue stress is given upon uh, ensuring that it is a leukocyte reduced product also, irradiation also given and then check for CMV also. CMV testing, even if it is not done, that is not mandatory, right? Because the chances of TTCMV, they are uh, anyways reduced when you do leuco reduction. It is not absolutely zero, but you should not delay platelet transfusion only because CMV negative units are unavailable in case of platelet transfusion for young children, right? Now, there is a small clinical advice. Before we move to indications for platelet, ki kab dena hai you have to use, there, is, there are few general principles being residents you should always remember that in general, platelets uh, are, you know that platelet uh, thrombocytopenia hoga, so you will give platelet, right? Thrombocytopenia can be due to reduced production it can be due to increased consumption. So, platelet transfusion is always better. Platelet transfusion is always better and more beneficial if given in decreased production as compared to increased consumption. If the thrombocytopenia is due to the reduced production, their platelet transfusion is going to be more effective rather than increased consumption. Because if the consumption is very high, whatever platelet you transfuse, that is also going to get wasted away. That is what happens in your uh, immune thrombocytopenic purpuras or hypersplenism, right? So this is the first clinical advice, clinical rule that you should remember, irrespective of the technical points and cutoffs and everything. Secondly, the point to remember is in case of a sick child, in case of a sick child, sick child means he has sepsis, he has DIC, he has some other comorbidity, severe comorbidity which can potentially affect the hematological system or the overall well-being or hemodynamics of the child. In a sick child, the cutoff to use platelet 
should be different than what is used in a healthy child. So you should have a, uh, like in a healthy child, in case you are able to tolerate a lower platelet count also, the tolerance level to of a sick child is relatively less. And that is why even uh, the, the different cutoffs used to be used, uh, they are to be used in case it is a sick child versus a healthy child. So comorbidities need to be taken into account when you decide whether to transfuse platelet or not. And third point that you should remember is a child who is having mucosal bleeding right mucosal bleeding will require platelet transfusion more commonly compared to the child who's having only skin bleed so mucosal bleed is a stronger indication when i say stronger indication not all mucosal bleeds will require i am saying relatively compared to only skin bleeds when deciding platelet transfusion. These are general principles, right? These three important points, uh, general principles mentioned in standard books, so they will ha be helpful for you later in your life as well, because uh, uh, once you go into your uh, super speciality, you become a practicing pediatrician, su practicing super specialist, cutoffs you will not remember, you will only remember what you do on a daily basis. So these practical points will still be important in case uh, you are, uh, you know, directly not dealing with hematology, but still you want to go in for considering when to give platelet transfusion, these principles will always come handy. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.